ओम ज्ञान तिमरंध से ज्ञानांजन शलाक चक्षुन्मल ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम वंदेह श्री गुरोर्श्रीयुतपदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री सागर जात सहगण रघुनाथन्वित सजीव साध्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरत्षे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वूप भक्तावता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तिशक्तिक श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद से चार्थे सुभिज्ञस्वराठ तेने ब्रह्म हृदयादिकव मुयंतूर तेज वारी मृदा यथा विनमय यो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीम नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीरेत रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवत थर्ड कैंटो चैप्टर थर्टी वन वर्स नंबर ट्वेल्व दीज आर द प्रेयर्स ऑफ जीवा इन दूम्ब सो लॉर्ड कपिल इज एक्सप्लेनिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ बर्थ वट हैपन्स आफ्टर डेथ ही डिस्क्राइब दैट in the previous chapter and especially the description is of the people who are not following the shastra conventions and are working against them engaged in sinful activities so it was explained how such people are troubled by Yam Duta has been taken to Yam Raj, and then it was said that they suffer various types of miseries, and go through various species of life. Finally, they come back and take birth as human beings. So they, this chapter explained how human beings are born and how they grow in the womb, and now he has still not taken the birth. Therefore, these are prayers inside the womb to the Lord. So this not Chakravarti explained that not that everybody prays like this, because if any everyone will pray like this, then we will not have all these problems in this world because everybody will be born as a devotee. So these are the prayers of some rare soul. That's why it is. He explained that the past tense is used, jantro vacha or jiva vacha. Wherever, uh, where, otherwise in all other places, he was using the present tense, which signifies regular activity. So, the prayers, uh, beginning. 
reading from verse number 12. And we are going to remind of this chapter. Now to verse 21. So, Janthur Vivacha Tasya Upsannam Avitum Jagadichyatatam Atmanatanor Bhuvichalana Chalachanar Vindam So, Hamrajami Sharnam Hakuto Bhayan Bhai Ine Drushi Gatira Darshi Asato Nurupa so he is praying to the Lord and he says that Soham Rajami Sharnam Yakuto Vayan that that sinful person who is suffering this misery in Idrishi Gatir Adarshi Asato Nurupa that I who have attained this suffering situation being inside the womb is not very happy situation except for some people like Sukhdev Goswami he did not want to take birth because he thought he comes outside in a lot of problems Gyanis they don't want to work they are renounced children right so womb is the place, you don't have to work, you don't even have to digest your food, you get pre-digested food. Once you are out of the womb, even if you don't have to work anything, at least you have to digest your food, which is supposed to be most energy consuming work than any other work we do. So he did not want to take birth. He said, I am very happy and comfortable here. And it's well balanced temperature because it's controlled, neither too hot nor too cold. And I'm sure his mother was not eating chilies in the Himalayas somewhere. So not suffering from hot food, spicy food. But this jantu, this soul, he says that I have attained this gatir asata anurupa. According to my misdeeds, he has put me in this situation. And now that who is suffering this, Aham Brajami Sharnam Yakutavya. I am taking shelter of you, O Lord, who is called Akutavya. Means if you take shelter of him, then you don't have any more fear. Otherwise, everybody is in some kind of fear, always. So, kutobhaya means fear from somewhere, and akutobhaya means fear from nowhere. So, that is the word used for the Lord, or that is the adjective for the shelter, that if you take shelter of the Lord, then there is no more fear. Therefore, he is called Abhay Charna. Abhay Charna. So, Tasya Upasanna Mavitum Jagadichya At Nana Tanur Bhuvi Charna Says that Lord, He takes various types of forms and who walks on this earth with his feet or rather bhuvi chalat charnavin even if he is still walking so avitum jagat to protect the world and he takes shelter this is his prayer in other words if anybody wants to get freedom from fear then he should take shelter of the Lord. That is the meaning. Bhuvi chalati ti Sri Krishna avatar avitrayena ti Swami charna. So he says that this word bhuvi chalat, walking on earth, it has been used with the intention of referring to Lord Krishna 
because he was walking on earth he barefoot the other avatars like vamana narsimha they do not walk on the earth matsya avatar cannot even come on earth he has to be in water tortoise also they like water so the according to sridhar swami in his commentary is referring his commentary of sridhar swami atr lingam grihit nana tano riti tasyev sarva avataritva and there is another uh, region that it refers to krishna because the verse said at nana tano one who accepts many forms to protect the earth so because krishna is swayam bhagwan he is the one who takes various forms all the avatars are coming from him he is the source of the avatars although many people in india think that he is an avatar of vishnu or narayan but krishna actually is swayam bhagwan so e etra chance kala punsha krishna stu bhagwan swayam indradi vyakulam lokam mridayanti yuga eva he comes in every yuga in various forms so this is another reason why it refers to krishna kapilokte sayam purva kalpa gat tad avatar apekshaya iti sandarbha now one can raise a question that when kapila was speaking krishna avatar was not there krishna avatar came much later in dwapar yuga and kapila is in satyuga so he is thousands of years beforehand so how can he refer to krishna is because you are a krishna bhakta you are trying to impose this meaning unnecessarily right but everybody does that so he says no it's not true and he is referring to jeev goswami sandarbha and he says that this mention of krishna is because krishna has also appeared before kapila when you have a cycle when you have a circle and if you take two points so which is first and which is later if you have circle and you take two points so a and b if the, if you see b from front side then a is in front but you can also see from a's point of view if he is looking then b is before him so krishna also appeared before in the previous kalpa he comes in every kalpa every day brahma he comes so kapila is referring to him he is always something you can find <laughs> right so whenever you cannot solve a riddle in the shastra then one of the best way is kalp bhed <laughs> and this refers to another kalpa so not so it after all this is not the first time that these things are happening and in different kalpas things happen so don't doubt because it is also a fact people they get hung up on these things and try to find fault in shastra without knowing that the person who is writing is not like us he has a greater vision our vision is limited if you are standing even in the open how long how far you can see and okay you can see maybe few hundred meters maybe kilometer to kilometer then you can think but how much can you think few hundred years but that is nothing when you see the life span of brahma mm. so they are the one who are trikal darshi who know past present and future therefore they speak like that
ईदृशो गर्भ दुखो दधी निवास लक्षण गति असाधो और मम समुचित दर्शित दर्शित इंडीड इज प्रॉपर दैट यू हैव पुट मी इन दिस डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशन विच मीन्स द मिजरी और द ओशन ऑफ मिजरी कॉल्ड वूम बिकॉज यू आर कंप्लीटली इन साइनेट यदवा अदर्शी कृपा दृष्टि विषयीकृता अन्यथा इम तदीय स्फूर्ति मम अति पापिष्ठ से न संभव देन यू गिव एन ऑल्टरनेटिव मीनिंग बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट अ ग्लोरिफिकेशन इफ यू आर प्रेजिंग समबडी यू डोंट गो दिस इज रियली वेरी नाइस ऑफ यू दैट यू केक्ट मी आई रियली डिजर्व इट And what kind of glorification is this? <laughs> right? Say something nice if you really want to glorify him. <laughs> he may think you are being very humble, but you are also putting the other person in an embarrassing situation. And it's very nice that you slapped me this morning. <laughs> I deserve that. So therefore, it's not so good to talk about he changes the meaning. He says. This adarshi, which means to show that you have shown me, is refers to Lord's grace that you have shown me your grace. Adarshi asato nurupa. I am very fallen, and I indeed needed such grace. And what is that grace? That you have inspired me. to remember you all the i'm so sinful asat i am sinful i am asat purusha i am asadhu i am not a sadhu i am not a holy person i am very unholy but you have given me you have shown your grace upon me that i am able to remember you so this is praise not that Very well. I deserve to be punished. You punished me. You are so great. So that is not such a good translation of the words. Therefore, you change it. So then he continues in the next words, and he says that. यस्त्र बद्धव कर्मरावृतात्मा भूतेन्द्रियाशय मयिमलब्य मयां आस्ते विशुद्धमिकारखंडबोधम आतप्यम हृदय वसीत नमा दट आई एम पेयिंग मै ओवसेज टू द लॉर्ड Who is Vishuddham, Avikaram, Akhand Bodham, Atapyaman, Hridaya, Avisikam? Who is very pure because he is free from the three gunas of nature and does not undergo any modifications, changes, and Akhand Bodham, whose knowledge is never covered by ignorance, Atapyaman, Hridaya, and Who is many who manifests in the heart, a suffering heart? Yes, to a tribad dayva, and he also appears as if he is bound inside the body, like because he is next to the living entity. Karmbir avit atma bhutendri ashya mayim avlambe maya. so he is as if he is covered by the karma in the form of piety and sin and taking shelter of maya in the form of body senses and uh, antakarana he is as if bound 
in the womb. So Lord appears and he is also one of the common person bound in the womb, although he is not like that. So tasya sva prabhor udbhutam lilam kripalutam chasmaran sashchalyama. So while remembering the wonderful Leela of the Lord and His grace with surprise He speaks this verse and what He says is that Ya khaluvatra asmad vidha durjivanam nana dukhmaya prati sharira eva aste kimasman paletum kimvasve rilatvene iti na vidmaya it says that we are unable to understand that Lord who is situated in every body which are just miserable because he is there as super soul in every body which are nothing but house of misery as Krishna says Dukhale and Sashvata so there is only misery all the time what we experience from this body is misery. And just to take a small break, you get little pleasure. It's like if you work, then you get some breaks, take tea break, lunch break. But most of the time you have to work. So like that, most of the time we suffer. And in between we get little breaks so that you can continue. Why you get break when you are working? So that you can continue your work. Otherwise you will get so tired that you will not be able to work. So just so that you can continue suffering. In between you are given breaks. So you take a little break then suffer. Then take a little break and suffer again. So he says that nana dukhmaya prati sharire vaste. You are situated in every body, and this is the body of jivas like us, atra asmad vidh durjivanam, who are nonsense. Means atheistic, antagonistic to devotion. And in the bodies of such people, the Lord is existing. What is his purpose? says we cannot understand whether you are existing there to nourish us, to protect us or you have some other independent pastime in this. What is the purpose? I mean why if you are a rich person, you have enough wealth, you are intelligent, you are not stupid, you are knowledgeable, then why would you go and live in a slum? If Bill Gates goes and lives in a slum in Bombay, the slums which are sown in the slum dog. The movie is what's called Slum Dog? Slum Dog Million. Billion. 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 Slum Dog Million. Eh? Billion. 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 So, why would somebody like Bill Gates would go and live in this slum? Suppose he goes and lives there. Then what will people think? Obviously people will think that what is wrong with this guy? What is he doing here? What does he want? Is he there to uplift this slum? People? Or he has something else in mind? Is he trying to make some more money from here? <laughs> so like that he says that why Lord is coming and living in these miserable bodies? What is the purpose? We cannot understand. Tamaham namami iti anvaya. So I am bound down to that Lord who is situated here. Aham sva duskrit phalam bhunjanaha 
karma bandho yadatra asmi taduchitam eva. He says that I am here in this human body bound by my karma. Because I have performed karma and I, as an outcome of that I need, I have to take birth. Because you cannot get rid of karma in either way. Karma is something which just sticks to you and does not leave. No matter what you do. And no matter who you are. And karma does not get stale or it does not rot. <laughs> Even if million years have passed, it will still hang around you. <laughs> so it will catch up when the time comes. It just waits for the time because karma works with the time. We are, too, we are very much in harmony. So when there is a proper time, then karma manifests. But he never forgets and never diminishes its So he says, I am bound by my karma, therefore as a result of my misdeeds I am suffering and I am in this body that is indeed proper for me. I have no problem in understanding this. Katham atra durgande mahanarke antaryamitvenapitishtati but how is that Lord, He is situated in this stinking body? Mahadurgandhi, Mahanarke, which is hellish. So if you see it from the point of view of the Lord, just as I gave the example, see from the point of view of Bill Gates going and living in the slum, making one jhopri there. So like that Lord is going and coming and living in this body which is totally slum. If you see the body even from inside, if you ever seen, if you have studied medicine, then they do autopsy. Dead bodies are brought and you cut it and then you realize that how can we even consider this body as beautiful or an object of enjoyment. It's all because covered by the skin. That's why they say that beauty is skin deep. You remove the skin, there is nothing which is beautiful about it. Nobody will be attracted if the skin is removed from the body. It's like you peel a tomato or a potato. It looks nice from inside. You feel like eating it. You do that to the body, <laughs> you'll close your eyes. And especially if the person is dead, and if the body is few days old, then try to cut it and see what is inside. Especially if you cut the belly part. <laughs> you're having quite some classes here. Hmm? <laughs> quite some classes here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because he's, sure? he's saying is, you know, Kathamatra Durgande Mahanarki. That this full of stench and miserable body. So how is that he comes and lives in this? What is his attraction? What is his gain? Why is he doing it? It's very important. Uh, Karambhir Baddhaiva Natu Baddha and then he appears as if he is also bound by the karma. But really speaking, he is not bound. Vrindavan Bhuvi Charat Charnar Vindatvat Avritatma Aham Yathata Thaiva Dehena Avrit Surupaiva Natu Avrita. So he says that it was said here that he walks on the land of Vrindavan with his lotus feet and just as I am covered with the material body he also appears that he is covered with the material body because when Krishna is here he also looks like everyone else not that he looks completely transcendental and no one will see him 
is absolutely Satchidananda Vigraha, then no one will see. But people see him, even non devotees, even his enemies, they see him. That is different that they see him according to their bhava, but they see him. And they don't consider him that he is the supreme being, Lord, God, or anything. So he says that he appears to be covered with the body, but he is not covered. That's why the word eva has been used. So Janma Karamcha Me Divyam, Krishna says that his birth activities are divya, they are divine, transcendental. Kim Kritva Bhutadi Mai Mayam Svashakti Mavlambya Pravarti. So he says that what how does he exist here? What is he doing? In what way? He says by taking support of his Maya, which here means not support, but by propagating the Maya. Because he is the Lord of Maya. Mama Maya, he said. Nanu evam tarhi tasmin Maya avlamban avlambad malinyam vikarasya prasajya titya vishuddha. So then one says that if he is taking help from Maya, then he also will have defects in him, such as that he will become dirty. He used some dirty object, then you also become dirty. And Vikari, you will have, have some change in you because of the Maya. So he says, no, that is not true. Therefore he says, Vishuddham nirvikaram chatatra hetu. That you are pure. These are the adjectives used for the Lord. Number one, Vishuddham. Pure. And number two, nirvikaram. No change in him. Like material objects. Tatra hetu. And what is the cause for that? Akhanda bodham. That you have complete knowledge. Maj jnanam eva yas jnanam maya khande to Not like our knowledge which becomes covered by maya. So that is not possible in case of the Lord. No one can cover him. Only impersonalists say that that he is also covered by Maya. Maya Dheno Dhrumatsa Ishwara Jeevi Vacha Yathecham Pivitam Tattvam Tu Brahma Eva So they say that Ishwara is also a product of Maya and Jeeva is also a product of Maya and Brahman is covered by the Sattvic Maya or Vidya part of Maya that becomes Ishwara and when he is covered by Malin Sattva or Avidya potency of Maya then he becomes Jiva so there Ishwara is also in Maya and Jiva is also in Maya therefore Jiva has to pray to Ishwara but ultimately he should give that up also and go to Brahman. So, but here it is denied that he is Vishuddham, Avikaram, Akhandavodha. That he is not a product of Maya, but he is the controller of Maya. Because he says, Maya Mavlambi. Bhuta Indri Asa Mai Mavlambi Maya. And he said, Mavlambi means Pravarti. So, Nanu Kathamidam Avgatam Tvaya Ityataha. So, it says, How does this knowledge come to you? How do you know this? So, for that, he says that Atapyaman Hirdiya Avsitam. That I have understood it in my heart, which is Atapyaman. Asamantat. Tapyamane atra hirdiya maya avsitam pratitam. I have realized it in my heart. Madhya hirdiya sthitva yena mayam api evam gyanam dattam tasya gyanam katam khandipam bhavi. 
So he says, I have also a little greatness. I am also not an ordinary fellow. That he has given me this knowledge and therefore my knowledge can also not be covered. Because he has given this to me. That is the meaning of the word Atapyaman. Atapyaman literally means which is being tortured. But the word Tapa also means knowledge. That's why we have Gopal Tapni, Narsing Tapni, Upanishad. There the word Tapni is refers to Gyan. Because when you do tapasya, that also gives some realization. I am just seeing if somebody has commented on this word atapyamana. Okay, then the, he continues praying. The next verse. That would be meaning that he, could, uh, he understand that uh, the Lord gave me the intelligence. By that I I understand my visions from all sides. I am getting so at least uh, God gave me this knowledge. Other living entities they don't understand. Yes, that's why he says that he has given me this knowledge, and therefore my my knowledge is also not khandit. That he acknowledges that it is coming from him. Does the non devotee have in the fetus? Hmm? <clears throat> the non devotee soul in the fetus, not the soul, the non devotee soul, but the non devotee in the fetus, what knowledge do they have? Zero. Yes, that's what I was thinking. And <clears throat> you see the difference between concocting something in the mind and having a realization in the heart? Concocting? I mean, that concoction is based on your past experience. Okay. And realization means to experience the object directly. Yeah. Because you can also have experience without the senses. Mm. Concoction is based on the experience of your senses and then on the basis of that experience you imagine things. Things that you have experienced before? They come and you churn it out. And you churn it out. And this is a completely different process. No, that's different. Yeah, Pancha Rachitaya Rahita Sarira. Channo yathendri gunartha chidatma koham Tena vikuntha mahimanam rishim tamenam Vande param prakriti purusha yoho pumansham So he says that I worship the Lord Pumansham who is prakriti purusha yoho param Who is beyond prakriti and purusha These are the two principles of Sankhya Purusha is the jiva, the living being, and prakriti is the matter from which things are manifest. So the Lord is beyond that. Tena vikunta mahimanam vishim. His, his glories are never obstructed or diminished by anything. He is the rishi who can see things. Rish gatav dhatu that. So Gati here means Gyan. Gati Gyan, Gati Gyan. 
So I'm praying to the Lord. Manu evam chet sa kathamatru sarire tishthet. Ya sarire atra rahita indriyani gunascha arthascha teshu eva chit chaitanyam yasya tatha bhutam atma sarupam yasya. So ham yathatra sarire channa eva tatha yatra rahita sthito. Api asthita eva ityartha. So he says that why the Lord can be situated in this body, and he explains that he is sarire atra rahita, that he is in this body but free from it. He means asanga, not touched by it. Indriyani gunascha arthascha te suveva chit chaitanyam yasa tathavitam. Just as I am situated in this body and covering, being covered by the body, although I am a conscious being, but I am covered by the body, senses and so on. So he is situated but without being covered by us. Although he is there. That is the meaning of the word Rahita. Sthitopi asthitaye. And therefore, although he is situated there, it is as good as if he is not there. Because if you are not influenced by the covering, then it is as good as you are not there. Because nothing is causing you any disturbance or nothing is influencing you. Tena hetuna na visheshena vikuntho mahimayas. And therefore his glory is not diminished or covered by anything. Jivaya is also chit, conscious, and therefore superior to matter. And yet he becomes covered by the inert matter. So this is karpanyam utbandhana. This is the power of maya only that such a thing is possible. Nothing else can explain this but Maya. How is it possible that conscious person can be covered by the unconscious matter? So therefore he says that Lord he is Akhanda, he is Vikuntha Mahima, he is Mahima, he is not diminished or covered by anything. Tena avgunthita, tena avguntha iti pathe. In some readings, instead of vikuntha, it is vikuntha. Then he says that bhaguri mateya karloke. Right? And bhaguri mati can have avguntha and vaguntha also. There is a grammarian. So A is dropped. Akar loka enatra samase avguntha mahimanam anavrit aishwariya. So then the meaning will be that his aishwariya is uncovered by anything. Because avguntha means to cover something. So there is nothing which can cover his aishwariya. Prakritais tadrashtur mahapurshasya cha param tabhyam paratatpam pumansam sankrishma. So he is giving a very special meaning of Prakriti and Purusha. Purusha he is referring here to Mahavishnu. Because he is the first Purusha. And he is the controller of the Prakriti. He is the one who starts the creation. And he says that I am paying to the person who is beyond this Prakriti and Purusha. 
And he said that person is Krishna. Because earlier he said that he is praying to Krishna. Therefore here also the meaning has to be Krishna only. So he is not praying to Mahavishnu, Narayana or anyone else. And that meaning can come if you take the meaning of Purusha as not Jiva but Mahavishnu. So beyond that is Krishna and he is praying to that. In my Uruguna Karma Niban, the Nesmin, Sansari K, Patichalan, Tadabhi, Shramena, Nasta Smriti, Punarayam, Pragranita Lokam, Yutia, Kaya, Mahadanu, Gahamantarene. So he says that by his Maya, I have fallen into this Sansara because I have lost my memory. Nasta Smriti. And he suffers various types of miseries on the path of this material existence, being bound the karma performed in Gunasaj Sattva, and he keeps on wandering. So he says that there is no other process, no other means by which he can get free from this bondage and attain knowledge of the self except the grace of the Lord. Nasta smriti punarayam pravrunita lokam yuktya kaya mahad anugraha mantarayam Without mahad anugraha and mahad anugraha means the grace of the Lord or also of his devotees, mahad purusha. Mahapurusha. So he says there is no other yukti, there is no other jugad that he can find. You know, familiar with this word jugad? No? Jugad is very f familiar word in India. If you are living in India, you must learn this word. Jugad means that when something is designed for doing one thing and you use it for something else, you make a jugad or the thing which is designed is designed so badly that it doesn't work. <laughs> so then you make a jugad, some what you call makeshift arrangement, mm -hmm. how to how it should work. So in the West you can find products for everything. Whatever you want, you will actually go to a market. If you search, you will find what you are needing. In India it is not like that. You have to make an arrangement for it. You take something else, you rub it, you cut it, <laughs> you grind it, and you fix it in there. <laughs> so that is called jugad. So it, in Sanskrit it is called yukti. Yukti? Yeah. So it's from yukti becomes jukti. <laughs> right? Ya is ja, jukti, and from jukti in language it becomes jugad. <laughs> This is how the word jugad is coming. So he says that I see no jugad. <laughs> how to get rid of this bondage, this suffering, except the grace of the Lord. That is the only solution, nothing else. So, Nanu Idrishi Bhakti Stvaya Katham Prapta. If someone asks that, how did you get this type of devotion which you are explaining here? So, then he speaks this verse. Tatra Bhakti He Prapti Karnam Mahad Anugrahe Vaitya. He says that the only way one can attain Bhakti is by the grace of Mahat, which is both a devotee and the Lord. So only by the grace of Krishna or his devotee, bhakti is possible, otherwise it is not possible. It is impossible. Krishna matirna parta svatava mitha vipadyata So 
the fixing of the mind in Krishna is not possible by one's own effort or by somebody else or by combination of both method. But only by Father Ajav Vishwakam. Only by the best of the great devotee. So that's, that's what this Jiva is also speaking. And obviously he is speaking from his own experience. Tadapi shramena tatpatha pariyatana shramena hetuna nashta smriti rasya malakshma jana mahadana gram vina kaya yuktya lokam bhagavato dhama pragnani tasva bhipsit paratvena vrinviyat. So he says, not only that I am here in this material body, material world, but I have lost my memory because of too much labor. And what is the labor? having picnic in this material world. <laughs> so sometimes people go on picnic and then when they come back they are tired. Right? The weekend is given because five days you work hard then two days you relax. But people don't relax. Then Friday evening they are running here and there. And then whole weekend they have to go somewhere. Then, then they say Monday morning, I don't like Monday mornings. Because now you are really tired. So this is called Prayatan Sram. Prayatan means going on picnic. Here, wandering here and there. Pariyatan. Like Parikrama. The word is Pariyatan. That wandering aimlessly. There is no purpose. Just go somewhere. Drive. Sometimes people say, let's go somewhere. Mm. This is right. <laughs> they have nothing specific in mind. Let's go somewhere. So that's called Pariyatana. And then you come back, you are tired. Now you can sleep. So he says that, I am so tired that I have headache. I cannot remember anything. Must smoothly. And even I got the grace of the Lord. So he says that otherwise how is it possible that I am desiring that I want to go to the abode of the Lord. Lokam Bhagavato Dhamma Pragaranita Swabhipis Abhipsita Paratvena Viranuyat. How can I even choose make this choice? that I want to have a pariyatan to Krishna Loka. I want to have my last picnic <coughs> in the abode of Lord Krishna. That is a real picnic. You go to the forest with Krishna and eat lunch there. And you come back, you are not tired. Mm -hmm. Apitu na Kaya so the meaning is that there is no other way, no other way but the grace of a devotee. So what does it mean? It means Ataha Puru Janmani Krishna Bhakta Sekasya Chin Madhguruha Prasad Vilasitam Eva Etan Me Krishna Bhajnam So the conclusion is that why this particular jiva is able to remember the Lord that in the previous life he had a guru and by the grace of the guru he performed bhakti and because of that he says prasada vilasatam eva itam me krishna bhajana. Now that grace of Guru is becoming manifest that he is able to do this bhajan. So this shows that bhakti can be performed even in the womb. Which is probably the most constricted place. No movement can you make. Your head is bent next to your leg. You are doing garbhasan. And still, you can perform bhakti. You cannot perform anything else there. So therefore bhakti is 
Sarvakaliki and Sarvatra. But it happens by the grace of a devotee. So he has few more slopes of prayers that will read tomorrow. If there is any question. I'd like to go to the point about Krishna walking on the earth. You don't like that? <laughs> well, I remember the prayers of Mother Bhumi where she was expressing her ecstasy of having uh, Krishna's lotus feet touching the earth and the marks of his feet there. Um, is my understanding correct that that's Vrindavan only? It's not Mathura or Dwarka? No, oh, why not? Well, he was not going in helicopter then. Mm. <laughs> he was also walking. But wouldn't he be wearing shoes and a walker? He's a king of some sort. Yeah, but he cannot wear shoes all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes okay. he also go to your garden without shoes. And there are little drops of dew. It's good for the eyesight. Prayers in the first part is like refers to uh, Krishna, mm -hmm. but it seems like directed to Paramatma, you know, who is situated within the body and with the jiva. So my uh, question is: Does no Paramatma is described as neutral, equal to everybody? So when prayer is directed to Paramatma like this, does Paramatma give up its neutrality and become Bhagavan or how is this working? No, no, he is directing it to Krishna and saying that you, you only are becoming Paramatma. This is Atta Nama Tanu Bhuvi Chala Charnaru You have accepted, you accept various forms and walk. So he prays to Krishna but refers to him as the Krishna who becomes or he is or, or expands as Paramatma. Yeah. But in the very first verse he says, Tasya Upsanna Mavitum Jagadichaya Atatano Atanana Tano Bhuvichala Charnarvindam Soham Brajami Sharnam Hiya Kuto Bhayam Hiya Nidrushi Dati Vadarushi Asatoa Mavita. I am taking shelter of him who is walking on the mm -hmm. earth and who takes many forms. And then when he referring to Paramatma, he's saying that, he, how come you come how and live? That, okay, this this. So when a devotee um, deals with Paramatma, he always sees the Paramatma as an expansion. And Krishna is Paramatma. As Krishna. Or devotee. Mm. And Krishna is becoming mm. Paramatma. And the Paramatma... It's not the neutral Paramatma. It's not the neutral Paramatma in the case of a devotee. Because it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise there is no relationship of mm -hmm. devotee and Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore Krishna says, Samoham Sarvabhute so na medeshvaste na priya ye bhajanti to maam mm -hmm. That's what I was wondering. So my other question is, you were mentioning that the karma hangs around mm -hmm. For a long time, eventually, until uh, the time is ripe. Mm -hmm. Now, where is that karma stored? With the in the chitta of the jiva, or with the paramatma, or mm -hmm. in the chitta of the jiva? In the subtle body. Mm -hmm. And just one little technical thing: vikara means without cause. No, vikara means transformation. Without transformation. No, no, transformation. transformation. Means avikara is without Avikaram, that's what I mean. Without transformation. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, on this point of karma again, <clears throat> I was asked a question recently, and the person believed that um, karma is like only one cycle only. Like um, somebody hits me, then I hit them back, and then it's all finished. And I had a doubt in the sense that I understand that each action creates a reaction. 
So my feeling was that, okay, someone hits me, I hit them back, and the karma is still there, and you just keep going. Why don't you just try it? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then you'll know whether it is one side. <laughs> you get another person and let her hit you once. And then you hit her back and then see if she's going to hit you back or not. <laughs> Do a practical thing. <laughs> so you'll know whether it is one time or two times, it may be few times. <laughs> Until somebody separates you. Until somebody separates you. And when someone separates you, yeah. then still you'll keep on abusing each other. And then you'll say, eh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> So it's not one time. It's not one. It is one time if you want it to be one time. Okay. And that means you do the action yeah. without involving yourself in it. Yesya naam krita bhava, yesya buddhir na lipata. Hattva apisa iman lokan na hanti na nivata. If you do it without the ego of the doership, mm -hmm. then it is one time. Otherwise it continues. And this is what will stop this continuation? Any, yeah. uh, anything yeah. else? Yes. If you come to this level, then it will stop. Okay. Forgiveness, repentance. Forgiveness and all this means we, we should have Nahankriti Bhav. And I'm not the doer. Mm. If you are forgiving with the ego that I am forgiving, and also it's not going to end. Then you'll get a good karma. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You'll get some piety. Then you can enjoy. And enjoying will lead to suffering. Continue. Mm -hmm. About the presence of the Lord inside of the body. But uh, basically there is not such a thing that uh, material elements can touch, can get into the contact with spiritual, there are two different things. But still uh, we say that uh, it's located inside the body. The body. So then what, what exactly means that? Because, uh, I mean, how the, this influence spreads into the body? And also, we put this um, paramatma is also in every cell or every element, is everywhere basically. So it's everywhere, but it's also located. So how is this? So what is your question, that it is there and why it is not touching? Yeah, because, no, the influence. That why it is not influencing? No, how is it influencing? Because Who is influencing? Paramatma? Paramatma. Influencing what? The soul. Not influencing the soul. Paramatma is just a different, it doesn't influence anything. So isn't it? Uh, but then, the question is like, is there but is not touching the, the matter. Mm -hmm. So how is there? If you want to see him, if you want to worship him or meditate on him, then he is there, otherwise as good as not being there. Just as I was saying that if you are in a room, sitting quietly, doing nothing, not participating, then it is as good as you are not there. Mm. But as soon as you desire to have a contact, then... So if you don't want to meditate on the super soul, then it's as good as if he's not there. But without his presence, nothing can happen. Yes. That is the Vedanta principle. What is actually the relationship between Paramatma and time? Time works its on its own. Without mm -hmm. time is in the energy of the Lord. And sometimes I mean, there are two ways time de described. Or rather I will say three ways. 
That one is that Lord Himself is time. And Krishna says, Kalavasmi, Sarva Lokrit, Sarva Lokshakrit Prabhuddha. And there is described that Tachesta Amahujana, that it is the endeavor of the Lord, which is time. And third is that time is material energy, part of Prakriti. So the uh, uh, interrelated is yeah, true. Of course, uh, interrelated. Yeah. So ultimately, when it is said it is Lord Himself, because seeing from the absolute principle, everything is Lord. But that doesn't explain things. So when you come down, when it is His movement, His action, means when He wants to do things, then time becomes manifest. So when they, when it's time for a particular karma of the jiva to manifest, mm. then it manifests. Then Paramatma, Paramatma says it's the doing. time now, or Paramatma is not doing. He is not involved like. in this arrangement. It's just like when you have karma, you perform certain action, it will give a result. Now, depending on that result, it will be decided when it will become manifest. Because it may be related with many other people. So that situation has to be arranged. So that is all material arrangement. According to the law of nature, law of prakriti, how the prakriti becomes influenced by karma and time. These are the two factors. These are the two factors which influence prakriti. Karma of the jiva and the time. So on the basis of that, then the result becomes manifest. Paramatma has nothing to do with this, he's not actively involved? No, he's mm -hmm. not actively involved. Is this, yeah. <coughs> is this possible if um, there is a sinful person, um, if I pray for this person, does it uh, make sense? Does it work? Yeah, it can work if your prayers are sincere. For the other person. Yeah. Instead the blessings will prayers also work in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>